Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got loads. New shoes, new Oakleys, your upgrades, the Bike Vault, plus our main talking point. Tech we think the UCI shouldn't ban, and tech they should. Yeah, plus I'm trying to still recover from my hour record a few days ago. Oh, God, I'm still stiff. <laughs> In case you are wondering about the hour record, uh, it was a few days ago, I absolutely battered myself. It was savage, but an amazing experience, <laughs> although my neck is still quite stiff from holding the position for an hour. Uh, but there's gonna be a video out this weekend, so stay tuned for that. Now on to our main talking point. The UCI have banned some questionable rules throughout cycling, but what are some of the things that they have banned that perhaps they shouldn't have? Yeah, uh, well, I think, on topic with the hour, right? The 10 centimeter rule. Yes. You know that rule? Yeah, I know that if, rule. If you're unfamiliar, right, the UCI have a rule, the 10 centimeter rule, to do with how high the tips of your tri bars can be relative to the center of your armrests, and it can be no more than 10 centimeters, which is fine. But the problem with this rule is that a lot of riders want to have their hands higher, and this is because you can get into like a get them yeah, close to their face, a praying mantis kind of position, a bit like my position that I have on. Was yours UCI legal? It was. It was a little bit higher. A little bit out. Yeah. Okay. We'll let, we'll a little. But you know, I'm I'm not a UCI rider. Now, the problem, and you, I know you're aware of this, right? Because yes. you've actually, you've seen this as well. Is riders want their hands higher than the bars can be. So what riders are doing now is holding on to their bars with their little fingers like this above the thing, which is silly, right? Yeah, no, it is, yeah. Not I mean, much control when you, if you're on a time trial bike, yeah. imagine you're on the Yorkshire Wheels course yeah. and all the bumps and water on that course and you were holding on with your little fingers. Yeah. And you go down a puddle. Yeah. You haven't got much to you're hold on to there. You're not gripping the bars no. properly. Yeah, it's a bit of a silly rule. They yeah. should just make the rule 20 centimeters yeah. and riders could safely hold the bars and yeah. close to their face more area. Yeah, so it becomes, by in, by having that rule, I think you're making riders less safe who want to have their hands higher. Why not just let them have their hands higher yeah. with higher bars? And they can see that riders are doing that. It's in pictures, it's mm. when it's on TV, you can see they're holding on with their little finger. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's that thing of, okay, if, if you are, if they are adamant that the rule should be that the bars can't be more than 10 centimetres, be strict in enforcing Definitely. people who are holding them like that and say, no, 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 no. You're DQ'd or whatever they do, I don't know. It's not just the 10 centimeter rules. There are lots of rules out there that are vague and probably insufficient. And a lot of rules apply to riders that are very different in height, whether it's Connor Dunn at six foot eight or Laura Kenny at five foot three. Yeah, like well, Connor's told me before about his struggles with the geometry rules. So there's a special rule regarding how far forward you're allowed to have your TT extensions from the bottom bracket. And normally it's 80 centimeters. But if you're over 190 centimeters tall, you get an additional five centimeters. But that's bizarre, because you could be 189.5 centimeters tall, you don't get that extra five centimeters. But you could be half, you know, you could be 190, or in Connor's case, you could be like 250 centimeters tall or whatever, but you still only get that extra, you know, five centimeters. Lot, no, and yeah. it doesn't seem to be in any way proportional to someone's height, which you feel, it should be, yeah, rather than having just this bizarre cutoff point. And yeah, the saddle layback rule is, is a strange one yeah. as well. A, a lot of shorter riders struggle with that because they need to be closer to the bottom bracket because they're smaller, yeah. but they get it the same as the tall people. So it's kind of a bit, mm, yeah. We'd like to see them sort those rules out. Now I've got another one. Yeah. Spinaches. Yeah, good shout. I'm probably a little bit too young to remember these, but I'm sure you do. But they does look very familiar to the way pros ride in the breakaway these days. All right, steady on, I'm not that old. But well, anyway, right, <laughs> I do remember them, but I don't get your point, they already are banned. They've, they got banned ages ago. Yeah, they're banned, but people are still riding in the same position, you know, with their hands over their top tubes, getting mm. arrows if they're on a time trial bike, yeah. but without the bar, so nothing to hold on to. So literally just resting yeah. on their top tube. Yeah, like invisible tri bars, you see yeah. it a lot, don't you? And in some ways, yeah, I get your point, because that's that's more dangerous than actually using the bars, because you've yeah. got no control over the front of the bike. And you're like, well, yeah, I guess it's that thing of like, right, you've banned the bars, which is good. We agree on that, yeah? That was yeah. a good thing to ban. Yeah, they well, don't look very good either. <laughs> yeah, but um, 
then you've got to kind of enforce people doing invisible tri bars. And they, yeah. they just, people, you see people doing it on TV all the time and they just kind of, they just ignore it. Yeah, especially like riding like that on the road with got a lot of other riders around you. Yeah. If you slip off, you're gonna take the whole peloton down with you. Yeah. So I think if they're gonna ban those bars, they need to ban riders riding in that position. Yeah. What anyway. would be, what punishment would you suggest for riders that, that do invisible tri bars? Um, they have to go back and do the whole race again and pick up all the litter that's been dropped. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go, UCI. That's the man on, yeah. Forcing new rules. The UCI weight limit, something we've spoken a lot about on the GCN Tech Show. But, I mean, Manon, what do you think about it? Well, firstly, it's been the same rule for 20 years. Yeah. And it was obviously put in place to make sure manufacturers don't make bikes that aren't unsafe. And, you know, taking, I guess, 20 years ago, carbon bikes were quite a new thing. Now they've been around for quite a while. But it's the thing, so if you have a 48 centimetre bike and a 61 centimetre bike, they both have to weigh the same. Yeah. Obviously, there's a lot less material on a 48 centimetre bike than a 61. Surely it should be adapted around that? Yeah, I, yeah, it's a good point. Like, I think maybe, if you, you know, getting rid of the 6.8 kilogram thing and instead having just kind of strength and safety rules that all bikes and equipment have to adhere to. Because as well, like, you know, you can build an unsafe bike and it'd be 6.8 yeah. kilograms yeah. because then it's just like on a weight limit thing, but it's not necessarily got, you know, there's other components on there that might not be that, that sound compared mm. to the frame. You know, the frame might be great, yeah. but the handlebars or the wheels might be a bit flexy. Yeah, I think it makes more sense for there to be regulations to do with uh, strength and safety of equipment. So they have to pass certain strength tests, like all equipment has to pass certain specific strength tests to that piece of equipment. Um, and that would be better than a kind of like blanket weight limit. Yeah, definitely. Because I've seen, I've been on teams before where they've had such light bikes, the mechanics have just added weights to the bike, whether it's like in the handlebars or down the seat tube. Um, and that kind of defeats the object of... Of the whole safety yeah, thing. It's, it's, it's just ludicrous, yeah. isn't it? When you're, you're getting to the point where you're adding weight to the bikes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a better way. Need to do that rule again, don't they? Mm. Right, Ollie. Yeah. We need to talk about yeah. socks. What? I saw your socks in the hour record. Yeah. They definitely weren't UCI legal. Okay. Okay, I'll I'll confess. I'm mean, put on the spot here. They were a teensy weensy bit over, like four centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it's more aero, right? And I wasn't racing for the UCI, so I can I can do what I want. But, but they just look awful. Okay, okay, right, I agree. Socks, high socks don't look as good as correct length socks, but they are more aerodynamic. But I think, yeah, okay, I understand the reason for this rule, because it's preserving the aesthetic of the sport and, it, and yeah. they're making it look better. So, okay, and I don't mind if they have a rule on sock length. All right, have a rule on sock length. But if you're gonna have a rule on sock length, enforce it because I remember at Harrogate in the world champs when Remco Evenepoel <coughs> he went down the time trial he, he was in the start pen for the time trial and the UCI man came along with the Austin Montego windscreen wiper and like measured his sock lengths and was like pass you can go and then he rolled down the start ramp and then immediately just pulled his socks up <laughs> to like oh, that's just ridiculous. way high yeah did they do anything about it Hello. No. Well, he, everyone, got, he got a silver medal. Everyone saw that happening on TV. Yeah. It was, you know, all over everything. Why didn't they do something about it? I, His socks were clearly high there, and it's a rule. Yeah, I think rules it's, should be rules. I think that's the thing, isn't it? With a lot of these rules, it's like you like with this, you know, taking away the spinaches and this. It's a similar thing. Enforce it. If you're yes. gonna have the rule, enforce it, especially when it's clear as day to yeah. everyone that's seen it on TV. But I don't know. What do we know, man? <laughs> I don't know. One more, okay. Have to get this off That's my chest. Fine. Yeah. S skin suits that have been banned, okay. So Castelli and Injura had skin suits a couple of years ago that had silicone dots in, notably on the on the upper arms, but on other places as well. And the Injura one had little silicone chevrons on them. And the idea was that this improved the airflow around like your arms and other bits of your body. And and, and it works. It's it's more aerodynamic. It helps keep the airflow attached for longer. But the UCI banned it because they deemed it 
gave an advantage. Too fast. Too yeah, fast for too, UCI. Too fast for them, yeah. And I just think this this kind of innovation, it seems senseless to, to, to ban that because other manufacturers can still do it. And all that's happened now is that like with other technology and other suits, they've just worked, engineers have just worked around the problem again. So it's like, you know, people doing invisible tri bars. It's, it's you know, if you look at no pins and the fabric that was on my hour record suit with the speed scales, they've engineered that topography, that kind of dimpled surface, but they've just done it within the new UCI rules within the fabric. Yeah. So and would you say that skin suit's probably faster than the, the one they've already banned? It's probably the, it's probably the same, I think. Yeah. Like from from what I understand, it's very like similar, but it's just they've had to re-engineer a solution to the same problem. It just doesn't just work around it. it yeah, but it just seems like a, quite a bizarre situation to be in yeah. to have to do that. I don't really understand. But um, yeah, I mean, oh, we could go on for a while about this, but let us know in the comments what you think, and also if there's anything that you think should be banned that isn't currently banned. Before we move on to hot tech, a yep. quick update on our presenter hunt. We've had a few applicants in via the app, but keep them coming in because we're really enjoying watching them. Yeah, and uh, well, we'll return to it in next week's show. Yeah. And we've got some more in. Time now for hot tech. Manon, <laughs> what have we got this week? Well, first up, do you own any snakeskin shoes, Ollie? No. You sure? Because yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure I've uh, seen No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Anyway. Well, Siddy have launched the new limited edition 60 Python shoe. How nice are they? Yeah, I mean, a bit of a sort of 60s, 1960s throwback, so I guess. Throwback, yeah. yeah. They're nice though, Sing I'm a fan of those. Yeah, single boa dial on them as well. I see what they did there. Appropriate. Yeah. Had to be, didn't it, really? I mean, are they made from real snakes though, man? No, no snakes skins was actually used in this. It's just the print printed onto the high performance shoe. Well, that's good to know. It is, yeah. I mean, um, well, Froomey's a big fan of Siddy's, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, I wonder if we'll see him in these. Yeah. The fashion icon. The well, on. let us know, I think, in the app. I think we should have a poll. Yeah. Hot or not, snake skin, Siddy, Python, limited edition shoes. I'm, I'm voting hot. Are you? Yeah. I'm not going to say how I'm voting. You love them. Hot sunglasses tech now with these new, well, kind of like old styled retro Sutro Origins from Oakley. Now the Sutros came out last year, but they're now available in these origin colorways, including John Canning's favorite, Celeste. Nice, I like yes. them. Yeah. But unfortunately, I feel like big glasses don't suit my face, so you won't see me wearing them. Yeah, they've been pretty popular with the Ineos riders at the early season races that I've seen quite a few of them. And I mean, Egan Bernal, like, He's kind of like the Sutro man for me. Yeah, he is. He I like, feel like a lot of riders like his glasses. have their own glasses, like G's got his own, what they call yeah, them, um, the jaw bones. bones. Yeah. Well, I think not all the riders, I think like that's the sign of like a serious, like really good rider. Stylish, right? Yeah, like when you have the sunglasses that are like associated with you, I think, yeah, yeah are the Sutro's gonna become the Bernal trademark. I don't know. Do. Like Lance had the M frames, Le Monde had his, like ones before that, that are like the Sutros and like, yeah, yeah G has the jaw, but yeah. Do you have yeah. your own? No. No, me neither. <laughs> On to the topic of saddles now. And this is something a lot of riders struggle with is finding the right saddle. But we got sent in this saddle from Three West, and this is something I have never seen before. I mean, it doesn't look like any ordinary saddle, but it actually inflates as well. How, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a really in interesting design idea. Um, and I did a bit of research on this and well, it appears to make sense. So the idea here is that your sit bones take most of the pressure and then you can adjust this front section with the inflation so that you're relieving pressure and just cushioning lightly your, your perineum. But uh, I mean, it would be good to try this out in the hour record, I think. That would be the ultimate test for yeah. that saddle. Speaking from experience, yeah, definitely the ultimate test for a saddle. <laughs> I'm so glad it's over. <laughs> That's cool though, isn't it? Yeah. All right. More hot tech next week. <laughs> Cha-ching! It's time now for screw riding upgrades by upgrades, where you submit evidence of the upgrades you've made to your cycling life, bikes, or equipment for the chance to win the ultimate prize, the GCN cap. Now. Before we move on to this week's entrance, we should see what happened last week. We should. Last week we had Bianchi Vigorelli and Kev State Bicycle. And the winner is with 65%, 
for Bianchi Vigorelli. Well done. Caps in the post, getting contact. It was and, a nice uh, buy. Yeah, it was good. It was, good upgrade. It was quite, yeah, but quite a big margin, 65%. Yeah. Can, oh, can often be a lot closer than that. So, first up this week, we've got this excellent submission from Matt Farr. Now, I'm not sure where Matt Farr is. He hasn't said his location. He's not disclosed that. But this is his Trek 470 Fast Track. And he says he bought it off Facebook Marketplace. Get this. 50 quid. That's a bargain. That is an absolute That's bargain. Um, and he wanted a bike, he's very specific, that he could use around the city for like getting around and also for his part-time job, delivering food. So his first intention, he says, was to like respray it and make it look amazing. But then he decided not to. And the reason is really good. He didn't want to make it look too bling to draw attention to it when he's locking it up around town. He doesn't want a bike that looks nickable. Uh, no, he's good though. Like, I've got a lot of time for this because I think he's, you've actually inspired me here, Matt. Because I think we should do a video on like what, how to get a bike that's not going to get stolen. Because I think sometimes, yeah, yeah bikes like get they're too nice looking. It's very easy for them to get nicked. Um, and also, he's done it on such an amazing budget. So he's taken a few bits off an old Specialized he had. Um, so like cassette and chain, and then he got some 105 shifters for 35 quid. He's done well. He's yeah. done really well. And he's done the cables himself. And uh, this is the final result. So that's how it was before. But look at that, it's really that's smart, nice. isn't it? I like this, I like the fact it's a single ring as well. Because yeah. again, like for that kind of bike that he that he what he wants it for, having less moving parts and keeping it nice and simple, it's just functional. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. And uh, gator skins as well. Great choice. The paint still looks good though, even though he hasn't resprayed it. Do you know what? I mean, he, he said he didn't want it to look like a bike that could be nicked, but I think that looks quite quite stealable. It's, it's a like nice a looking bike. I'll steal, I'll That's steal a nice... that. All right. I won't. I won't. <laughs> it's not going to be plain sailing for Matt though. Who's he up against this week, man? On. He's up against. Oh wait, hang on a minute. How come you, your tops changed colour? I just fancied a wardrobe change. I went to the GCN oh. shop. Nice little red jumper. Okay. Yeah. He's up against Keith Jader with this Lapierre bike. I mean, it's a nice bike to begin with. Oh, yeah. Like, I do like yeah. the air code. Very uh, aero, nice. quite unusual looking frame, but really cool. He's, so what's he done to that? I mean, that's already like awesome. What's he, what's, what's well, he's changed? gone to town with the upgrade. He's got these Ursus wheels and he's put new Continental limited edition tires on oh, there. Yeah. But he, only the pros normally get those. I'm quite intrigued as to how he's managed to get a pair of uh, Pro Limited tubulars on there. but he might that's... be a pro. He might be, yeah. In disguise? He might be. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's got a new Physique's carbon saddle on there. Oh, yeah. And he's gone to town with a nice stem and some new carbon handlebars. Oh, nice uh, bladed aero bar. updated his pedals to Al Altegra pedals. Yeah. And he is thinking about getting a new power meter. Yeah. I think a power meter would finish that bike off. It would. Yeah. It would. It's very nice. He's, I spot he's changed his bottle cages as well. Those uh, black ones look a lot nicer than the white ones. He they had do, on yeah. Not a fan of white ones. White can get a bit dirty, can't they? A bit yeah. scruffy. Um, they suit the bike a lot nice more. Nice bar tape as well. He's done a good always, job with that. always be black bar tape. Matches the saddle. That's nice. um, that's some really good upgrades he's done there. The next time he fan. takes a picture, it should be in the big ring. It should be, Biggie yeah. Smalls, the bike. Yes, it's not, definitely. is it? Yeah, he's, he's made a slight mistake there, but this isn't the bike vault. No. This no. is upgrades, so two great upgrades there. Who wins this week? Who, who are you going to vote for? Doesn't I matter. I can't tell you. They decide, we don't decide. Vote in the app. It's now time for the bike vault our favorite bit of the show where you submit pictures of your prides and joy and then we judge them to be either nice or super nice. If they're super nice, then the bell gets rung and they're submitted for eternity into the vault. So, can I ring the bell this week again? I really enjoyed that. Please. Okay. Just this one time. I mean like normally it's my job you can I do ring it next, the bell. Next week. It's like, it's you okay. You can, yeah, I'll let it's okay. But if you disagree with our judgments, then don't worry, you can vote in the app alongside the show and we'll put next week's bikes in ahead of the show as well so that you can vote on them ahead of time. I mean, they don't ever disagree with what we say. We, no. t we get it right 100% of the time. But, yeah, I don't know why we're doing this, but anyway. Right, first up is this. What do you think of that? It's a Pinarello F10. It's from Nobono7. 
And he says he's been riding around sunny Florida on this new frame. That wow. is nice. It's got, is that a custom paint job with that on the front? Oh no, it's a Froomey one. It's the Froomey one with the Rhino. It's kind of like, it's a special edition paint job I think that Pinarello did. Because there's that story where they say that Froomey was out riding and he once got chased by a Rhino once. I don't know if it's true. It's just a rumor I've heard. And so that's is that why- Is that where this has come from? Yeah. Oh, I like that. It's nice. And I, he is a bit of a rhino when he rides because he gets his head down, doesn't he? And he just charges. <laughs> Off a bit like, oh, my neck hurts. I'm <laughs> so stiff. Um, what are we thinking though? I mean, it's a, it's a, that is an yeah, awesome nice. bike. The th well, you've said it. You've said it there. You've just like, it's, it's, nice. it's a nice. It's nice. The it's bo a nice. bottles are matching. Not that, a fan of the red. Is that what you're going for? Well, yeah, that, that well, it's just that saddle bag that he's yeah, the red left on bag. there. There's a bit of excess steerer, you know, pedals not quite aligned. No. Nice, nice it's, wheels I mean, it's, a, it's a stunning bike. You're just, not, you're just not doing it justice. No. Nice, right, next. Nice. Next, we've got, wow. Oh. I mean, hey, another Pinarello. This one's from John Sargent, and that, that appears to be one of the new Marts, doesn't it? That new, is, that, new Pinarello Marts. That's super nice. Where is that? Do you know where that is? No. We need to get the internet to find out. I mean, it's, it's, that, it's, it's somewhere it's in some city, isn't it? It's, there's that statue, we could find it out from that statue if yeah. we Google it. But that is, wow, those uh, Ghibli wheels on as well. Then that's not, no pedals though. Gold chain. Yeah, wait, what? No pedals? Can't go very far without them. Also, what is going on with the saddle to bar drop? That looks like it's like a showroom bike because it's got like an uncut seat post because no yeah. one's riding with that saddle to bar drop, are they? Come Connor, on. Connor Dunlite. Connor Dunlite, yeah. Oh, no pedals. Come on, can we let that, I don't think we can, I mean. That's super nice. That is super nice. Okay. Right. And it's a track bike, so. Yeah, oh, special dispensation. <laughs> right, next up, what do we got? Next in from Dennis Vorage in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. And he sent in his giant propelled advanced pro disc. Wow, oh, oh, look at that. Very nice, That's isn't nice. it? Nice. Yeah. It's like a renaissance color. Yeah, with a uh, what, pink chain on there. Pink chain on them. What do you think of that? Pink, uh, what, yeah, I'd what, ride a pink chain. I don't know what we do for a pink chain. We'll have maybe wend wax on there or something. But yeah, Denver, Colorado. That's outside of the Bronco Stadium, by the way. Mm -hmm. I recognize nice. it. Yeah. Nice bar tape on there as well. Yeah, That's super cool. cast bar tape. But it's cool how he's coordinated that. It like matches the, the, the that, I mean, that paint job on the frame. I've not seen that before. No. That's, re That's I re nice. Yeah, I really like that. Um, I like the stem as well. Nice yeah. stem. Under and the that. tan side walls look, look spot on, don't they? Yeah. And the I mean, Minders pedals up. Yeah, has, yeah. Biggie Smalls yeah. as well. Um I mean he's got his saddlebag left on there. Yeah, but needs but, must. Yeah, and it's a very neat one, isn't it? It's that it's that nice, nice small compact. It's that silker one with the boa dial on that, that I think is oh, what that is. Yeah, one. yeah, they're really neat and I think that's quite quite tidy. Valves. Aren't entire logos not quite lined up, but oh, we're not going that far. Valves lined up. Like, hang on, these are the rules, man. These are the rules. It's a bit far. I think he's done enough. I think I, he's done enough. I think it's super nice. I think that's super. I agree. <laughs> right. Next up, we've got DC Walker, who's gone on a chilly Long Island winter ride, um, thirty Three degrees, degrees Fahrenheit. What's that? Double it and add 30. Mine's bloody hell. That's like zero degrees, isn't it? Um, or like a little just around that. Wow. Uh, it's got his Canyon Air Road there with his hunts on. What do you think of that, man? It's nice. I'm not mm. sure about the colour of the bar tape, though. That is very unusual bar tape. Yeah. I mean, he's. It's like he's, co I've never seen this before, but it's like he's coordinated the bar tape colour with the tan sidewalls yeah. on his Victoria maybe, yeah, tires. Yeah, maybe that's what you're thinking. Um, gold chain though. Is it? Yeah. 
I mean, it's a slightly dirty gold chain, but he has got big East Walls on there. He yeah. has lined up his pedals. I do like the matte black frame. That is probably my favorite yeah. color for a bike frame. Yeah, I do, I do, I do like, I agree. I like matte black when it's contrasted with a yeah. bit of gloss black. Like you have the gloss black Canyon logo. That is a cool bike, isn't mm -hmm. it? Um, oh, I mean, the, I think he's, I mean, he's, he's taking a lot of boxes there. I think I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit like, what are you thinking? I'm thinking nice, but then it's like, it could be super nice. It's on the verge. I might just being picky with the bar tape. Yeah. Yeah. I think that bar tape's kind of working on a weird, in a weird it is, way. Yeah. And with the background and the color scheme. Yeah. Do you know what? I think that's super nice. Yeah, it probably is. That wasn't very enthusiastic, Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and lastly Ooh. this week, we've got Mark Giannisi. Um, I don't think I've pronounced that correctly, but wow, look at that. Specialized nice. Venge Vias. Oof. Oh, do you know, is that a gold chain again? I think you're seeing things. You think? I don't think it is. He, he could... does, what do you think of that? No, what it's nice, I really like the paint job. Mm. And does it, going into the seat post, does it kind of blend in? Yeah, that, that's like a, a cool I paint like job, that. isn't it? Like, yeah. yeah, that is really cool. The black post, like blending into the mm. blue and the frame paint work. That is Look cool. Look at the bars as well. It's like that curve in the bars. Yeah, that's the Vias cockpit that's on the that's on, nice. on that bike, yeah. But I mean, I mean, he's lined up his tires and his and valves. And the valves. But <laughs> sort of they nice. are the longest valves in the world. He wins the award for the longest valves I think I've ever seen, yeah. ever. I mean, they're almost touching his hubs. <laughs> They're really halfway there. <laughs> yeah, um, vector pedals on there as well, and um, yeah, he's he's got he's got Jaw Ace on there. It would appear as well, which is I mean, it's, it's seriously bling. That, that bike, is, isn't it? Seriously nice. bling. Outside of his Kando, um, what do you think? Super nice, definitely. <sighs> yeah, I think it has to be. Doesn't it? <laughs> Well, that's it for the Bike Vault this week. More Bike Vault next week. And if you disagree with our judgments, as ever, you can vote in the app. But I mean, well... We're always right, yeah, so... We are. Really also, no what's happened to the TV? If you've seen the TV, we don't know where it's gone. Ollie. So, someone's stolen it, so... I'm pretty sure I know where this TV is. Where? What TV did you use at your hour record yesterday? Did you, did you warm up? Oh, yeah. Probably left it at the velodrome. Anyway. You're gonna have to go back and do another hour record and pick it up. Yeah, we well, hope you've enjoyed the uh, the tech show. Follow us on social, head over to the GCN shop if you'd like to get some cool merch. And uh, well, we'll see you next time. Should we get over, probably give the velodrome a ring, see if I can, hopefully they've not, no one else has taken the TV.